Quick disclaimer. In this video, I'll compare different cameras in different resolutions with different codec options. However, if a camera with high resolution can capture more details, this does not mean that the camera is therefore better per se. In different situations, in different projects, there are always different focal points and there is not a perfect camera or lens or codec for everything. I made this comparison mainly for myself out of interest and in order to get more insights into various cameras and their strengths and weaknesses. Even if you don't have any of these cameras, there may still be something interesting for you. What follows are the resolutions and codec options of the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro 12K in 12K, 8K and 4K. It's also about the Blackmagic 6K Pro, both in 6K RAW and also 4K ProRes. And it's about the Sony FX6 and its internal 4K recordings in all eye and external RAW. The first thing that interested me, how many details can the respective cameras record? For this purpose I made a small setup in the studio and recorded the same frame with all cameras. In 4K with the Ursa we can recognize even the small text with a little effort on closer inspection. The picture seems a bit blurred. In 8K we can recognize and read the text much better, yet it still seems a bit blurred, even a little smeared from top left to bottom right maybe. In 12K a significant increase in sharpness and detail is visible. Also pay attention to the image noise at 4K versus 12K. The color noise also becomes much sharper and stands out a little more in 12K. Personally I really like the look of the slight softness of the 4K. If we take a look at the 6K camera we see that the image looks sharp but color edges can be seen. Even when I rebuilt the test setup on another day with a slightly different light setup the color edges were still present. The same setting in 4K ProRes looks a little less detailed but has the same color edges. The FX6 with its 4K all eye codec shows clearly the least details. The small font is unreadable and even larger letterings are blurred, but we don't see any color edges here. Recorded in 4.2K ProRes RAW and converted to DNG to edit and resolve shows a significant increase in sharpness and detail, but colored pixels become visible that apparently cannot be interpreted correctly during demosaicing. As expected, they are particularly visible on contrasting edges between black and white. In addition, a honeycomb-like pattern can be seen in some places, especially striking with the red text. And for those who think, well, that doesn't surprise me, if you convert a raw format to another raw format, then something like that happens, right? The same clip viewed in Final Cut also shows colored pixels and even more of them. Interestingly other colors and I would even prefer the material converted to DNG. In Final Cut however less of the honeycomb structures are visible. Here are the lowest and highest resolution settings in comparison. All I 4K compared to 12K B-RAW. Can you now say the higher the resolution the better the camera? No. High resolutions are primarily interesting for special effects when you really need the additional details. But don't forget, the higher the resolution, the more precise you have to work with the focus. If the focus is only a little bit off, the difference between 4K and 12K is no longer visible. Take a look at the entire image section and a close-up with a small focus shift. This is particularly complicated when the focus throw from the lens is small. I make really small movements here that have a very big impact in high resolution and zoomed in close-up shots. With static shots it's not easy to hit focus reliably and quickly and I dare say that it doesn't get any easier in motion. Does this mean that high resolution cameras are unnecessary apart from special applications? No. I personally find the 4K image from the Ursa 12K pleasantly soft and cinematic and for my taste it has a analog character. Each sensor is unique and has its own advantages and disadvantages and no spec sheet in the world with resolutions and dynamic range can communicate how good the image is for your project. By the way, if we look at the same cameras outside the studio in everyday situations where there are fewer contrast edges and generally more distractions for the eye, then the differences are much less visible. For example, I have become a big fan of the Sony FX6 with converted DNG RAW recordings. 
you just shouldn't clip the highlights because some of them can't be restored with a smooth roll-off. So facts that seem simple on paper and in the imagination are often different in reality and must be discovered individually for each project. In the end, the most important thing is to support the story with suitable pictures and to increase its effect on the viewer. And I made many more test recordings, but not all of them made it into the video. Maybe it's still quite interesting that I also did vintage lens tests. Sometimes you see new lenses with advertising such as 4K ready or 8K ready. How does a 40 year old cheap lens perform? The picture with f5.6 is visibly sharper with higher resolutions, but does not match the sharpness of more recent lenses. If we open the aperture to the maximum possible 2.8, the difference is hardly visible anymore. By the way, the tests before were all created with Sigma Art lenses and aperture 5.6 so that the sharpness differences that depends on the resolution is more visible. Of course, hitting the focus at aperture 1.8 or 1.2 with 12K is much more difficult even with modern lenses.